We are Team 5006, and this is how to build our swerve drive. The bill of materials and CAD files are down below. First, we are going to make the swivel base. We will need a 120 millimeter swivel base, pliers, tape, a drill press, safety glasses, epoxy glue, toothpicks, and magnets. Pull the white feet off with pliers. Do this to both sides. Once all the feet are removed, tape over the crack between the circles. Tape all the way around on both sides. Now, use our template to drill small pilot holes all the way around the exterior of our swivel base. Make sure that it goes all the way through. Then, use a quarter inch drill bit to drill in the same spots as the pilot holes, but don't go all the way through the metal. Mark one side of each magnet with a sharpie. Then, use the epoxy glue to attach the magnets in the holes you just drilled. Make sure that you alternate the magnets in the proper order. And set the ring aside for the epoxy to dry. Next, we're going to assemble the gearbox. We're going to use a worm gearbox from Baldor, two seals, snap ring pliers, and gear grease. Right now, we're looking at the outside top piece of the gearbox. First, you'll need to use the snap ring pliers to remove the snap ring from the back before putting the larger seal around the outside and the smaller seal on the inside. Then, fill the gearbox halfway up the spurred gear with grease. Now, we're going to be attaching the sprocket. You will need a 60 tooth number 25 sprocket from VEX, four 832 screws two inches long, four 832 nuts, Team 5006's 3D printed worm gear connector, and the gearbox. First, you're going to use a worm gear connector as a template. Being careful to line up the center hole, use a number 16 drill bit to drill four holes in the sprocket. Then, place the top of the gearbox into the bottom. Next, attach the sprocket to the flat side of the gear connector and place it on the top of the gearbox, using the nuts at the bottom to tighten it down. Now to attach the wheels. We will need two four inch wheels, two half inch shaft hubs, two set screws, six 1024 lead forming screws that are each three quarters inches long, and a drill. Drill the screws into the wheel plastic and take them back out again to thread them. Do this to every other hole. Then, place the hub on the wheel and tighten the set screw before using a wrench to tighten on the wheels. Now we're going to attach the swivel base. We are going to use the Lovejoy connector and Allen wrench, four pieces of 832 all thread, 12 832 nylock nuts, four 832 spacers, four countersunk 832 screws, wrenches, and the altered swivel base. First, tighten one half of the Lovejoy connector onto the gearbox. Then, put four of the nuts about a quarter inch up the all thread. Make sure the swivel base is magnet side up before putting the all thread through the center holes and using four nylock nuts to secure the bottom. Place the countersunk screws in the outside of the swivel base and put spacers on the sprocket. Then, place the swivel base on the sprocket and tighten it down with four nylock nuts on the bottom. Next, we're going to attach the sim motor. We will need six number 10 washers, four 832 nylock nuts, two one inch 1032 screws, Team 5006's 3D printed top plate and octo spacer, a three inch by six inch aluminum tube, wrenches, sim motor, and the other half of the Lovejoy connector. First, put the octo spacer on the sim motor using the 1032 screws and two washers. Then, tighten the other half of the Lovejoy connector before sliding it into the top of the aluminum tube and putting it over the all thread, lining up the Lovejoy connector. Now, place the top plate on top. Remember to have the wires line up with the crescent gap. Finally, use the number 10 washers and the nylock nuts to secure it in place. Now, we're going to make the steering assembly. We will need a bag motor and Versa gearbox, a half inch hex 16 tooth number 25 sprocket, two pieces of quarter 20 all thread, four 1032 screws each 3 8 inches long, two quarter 20 nylock nuts, a motor mount plate, number 25 chain and link, two pieces of one inch C channel each 4 inches long, one half inch hex collar, five number 10 washers, a 1024 one inch bolt, two quarter 20 2.5 inch bolts, two quarter 20 nuts, two quarter 20 3 quarters inch bolts, 
and two quarter 20 7 8 inch long threaded spacers. First, put the hex collar on the end of the Versa gearbox, followed by the 16 tooth sprocket, then a washer, and then the 1 inch 1024 bolt. Tighten the collar down so that the sprocket can't move. Now use the 1032 screws to attach the motor mount plate to the gearbox. Then, run the 2.5 inch bolts half of the way through the bottom holes in the motor mount plate. Push the 3 quarter inch bolts through the back of the motor mount plate and add two washers each. Secure the bolts with threaded spacers. Then add the quarter 20 all thread. Now, Tighten on the two normal quarter 20 nuts about a quarter of an inch down. Place one piece of C-channel flat side up and slide it over the all thread. Place the drive box on top of the C-channel between the all thread. Make sure the two and a half inch bolts line up with the holes on the aluminum tube. Then put the other piece of C-channel flat side down on the drive box and tighten it in place with the nylock nuts. Make sure that the 3 quarter inch bolts are still a little loose. The washers should be able to rattle. Take the chain and pull it around the sprockets. The 3 quarter inch bolts should be loose enough to do this. Now tighten the 3 quarter inch bolts again. Use the quarter 20 nuts to tighten the chain and adjust the fit. And there you go, Team 5006's Swerve Drive. You can design and make your own Hall Effect sensor board to read the magnets and location, or you can just buy the kit for our Direction Sensinator board. If you decide to do the latter, here's how we mount it. Use two 832 spacers to keep the board off the aluminum housing, and tighten with two small screws. We threaded the holes in the tube to make this easier. Then, adjust the Hall Effect sensors to be centered over their magnets. 